Okay, today is a pretty great day because we get to talk about the normal distribution. This is going to be a big aspect of our statistics class going forward because we can do a lot of work with hypothesis testing from the normal curve. And also, this is one of the backbones of statistics. Now, before you start this lesson here, I strongly recommend that you get two things in front of you. First of all, you're going to need a calculator. And second of all, you're going to definitely need the Z-score chart. Now, I have a downloadable printable copy of this. Um, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about how to read and use the chart, and we'll get into this in detail later. But let's get started with the empirical rule. Okay, so earlier in the unit, we have talked about standard deviations. And much earlier in this course, we've spent a lot of time talking about standard deviations, so it's going to be good to kind of go over um, the basics. First of all, in the center of every normal distribution is the average. The person in the center of this distribution is the most average person you can possibly be. This also is the middle of the data. So roughly 50% of the data is right here um, at the average. That means that 50% is below the average and 50% is above the average. This average, theoretical, um, is the true middle of the entire group. Now let's talk about the empirical rule. The empirical rule. The empirical rule is going to basically set up a very um, set and agreed upon percentage for each of these sections inside of this um, bell curve. Between the first standard deviation, so one standard deviation above and below the norm, is roughly 68% of the population. So this determines basically what is normal. And you can't really see me doing this, but I'm using air quotes, normal um, you know, normal in this population. So if you're within one standard deviation above and below the norm, which in this case is the average, you are considered normal. So the empirical rule starts off with 68. Now, if we go between these standard deviations, so if you're within two standard deviations, you are 90 5% of the total population. So that right there makes it pretty easy to say that there's very few people outside of two standard deviations away from the average here. So we're now going to call this 68.95. Okay. Now, even beyond the second standard deviation is the third standard deviation. And if you were going to basically take everybody with inside of this, then this would be 99.7% of the population. 99.7% of the population is with inside this third standard deviation above and below the norm. So there's very few people or very few objects that would be outside of three standard deviations. So one of the more important parts about knowing um, how much percent with this is with inside each of these zones um, comes down to learning about some subtraction. What I want to show you, and that's this is going to be somewhat important for your homework here, is that within one standard deviation, is 68% of the population. That means there's roughly 34% between the average and one standard deviation below the norm, uh, the norm and 34% above the average to one standard deviation above the norm. You see how the 34 and the 34 add up to make 68. We can use some other subtraction tricks to figure out how much is inside of these next two zones if we go 95 minus 68 
and figure out that we have roughly 27% uh, left. So this would be 13.5 between the 1 and the 2 standard deviation mark and 13.5 between the negative 1 and the negative 2 standard deviation mark. So if we add all four of these red numbers together, what we then get is we get 95%, or the distance between two standard deviations below the norm and two standard deviations above the norm. Okay, we can go one step further and figure out how much is inside of each of these by subtracting the 99.7 from the 95. Or sorry, the other way around, 95 from the 99.7. And then what we have there is that remainder divided by 2 will give us 2.35%. 3.5, not 2.5. 2.35% 2 in each of these spots. All right. And if you add up all of these red numbers, this would give you the 99.7%. So, and then we can keep going if we wanted to and take that remainder and figure out how much is on the outside of these um, third standard deviations. And that would be very, 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 very small. This is 0.15, and this here would be 0.15. So the chance that you would be three standard deviations above the norm um, is less than a percent. And over here, because you would, again, this isn't, oh, this isn't even 1%. It's actually 0.115%. So all of these red numbers in percents would add up to... Uh, 100%. So the chance of you being out here, it isn't even 1%. It's 0.15%, which is just really, really, really small. Move the decimal two spaces to the left to see that. All right. Well, it's time to put down some more notation because now our x is going to belong to da, 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 the normal distribution. And the normal distribution inside of these parentheses, we've seen many things before. We've seen P, we've seen A and B for the minimum and maximum. Here, we're going to label this first number in this uh, parenthesis here, or this uh, part of the parenthesis as the average. And here, we're going to have the lowercase sigma, and lowercase sigma is standard deviation. Now, we just talked about the empirical rule, and we divided this up beautifully. This is going to be one of the big concepts of this chapter. But one of the more important applications is this, what is a z-score? And this is a definition you should, you should memorize. A z-score is how many standard deviations or lowercase sigmas, you are away from the norm. And the norm, in this case, is the average, or the mean, or mu. So the z-score tells you how many standard deviations you are away from the norm. So if you uh, were talking about IQ, a genius IQ would be two standard deviations away from the norm. So your z-score would be two. If you had a normal IQ, your normal IQ would be anywhere between one and negative one. So if someone gave you an IQ test and said, hey, looks like you're 1.1, um, you're just outside of norm or the normal uh, group here. So you would just basically take your z-score um, between, you know, negative one to one if you're normal. Anything higher than one or lower than negative one would be abnormal. And a genius level would be anything two or greater. Okay, so let's actually look at some z-scores for a student who um, scored in two different classes. So let's do the first one together. A student scored 85 in a class that had a mean of 78 and a standard deviation of 12. 
So here is the formula for the z-score. The formula is going to be z equals x minus mu divided by the standard deviation. That's the z-score formula. Pretty straightforward. Let's explain what each of these letters represents. The x is your data point. So a, a student scored 85 in a class that had a mean of 78. So this is our mu and a standard deviation of 12, lowercase sigma. So here, my x belongs to the normal distribution with a standard deviation of 78, sorry, an average of 78 and a standard deviation of 12. Now we're gonna plug in these numbers and see what we get. We are going to say this is now 85, my score, minus 78, so I did better than the class average, divided by 12, which is the spread of what was normal in that class. So let us go and do the work. 85 minus 78 is 7. And then we have 12 in the denominator. 7 twelfths is 0.583. Now, what's very important about this is this is your z-score. That is z. This, I know we've been doing a lot of percentages, but this z-score is not a percentage. So not percentage. This z-score is 0.583, which means that you scored normally. If we look back up at our normal curve, 0.583 puts us right here, and uh, let me just put a gray triangle about where 0.583 is. Okay, there it is. And that 0.583 is literally between mu and one standard deviation. So it's a above average score, but it's still normal. All right, let's look at another student's test, and let's change colors here just so we can keep track of where we are. So this is another situation. The student also earned 80 in a class that had a mean of 86 and a standard deviation of 10. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause the video and try to fill out this notation. And I'd also like you to try to fill the correct numbers here into this um, z-score formula. Okay, hopefully you've um, <laughs> paused the video and done that. All right, so in this case, the student scored an 80. That was their X. In a class that had a mean of 86. Okay, so this person in this class did below the class average, and the standard deviation was 10. All right. So here we have 80 minus 86 divided by 10. So the numerator is negative 6. The denominator is 10. And we can reduce that down to three, negative 3 fifths. But as a decimal, this is negative 0.6. This is very important to understand again. This is not a percentage. This is not a percentage. This is the z-score. Now, I forgot to mention this up here. This is going to be my 86. This is the average of that class right there. And the standard deviation of the class there. OK. Now, this negative 0.6 is not a percentage. But this doesn't speak too badly to the student, because even though the student did below the norm, negative 0.6, which is a little bit to the, whoops, don't do that to me, Pen. All right, maybe I can fill this in here a little bit. All right, sorry, this got a little messed up. There we go. But this negative 0.6 here, you can kind of see that it is right there inside this first uh, zone of normality between the first and negative first standard deviation. So even though the student did below the average or below the norm, the student um, you know, still considered normal. Okay, so now we have to kind of put this all together to wrap up this video. So the first z-score, we found 
from looking at our z formula was 0.583. This z-score at 0.583 told me that the x test score, which was 85, this is our one test score, was 0.583 standard deviations to the right of the mean 78 in that problem. So this positive z-score was 0.583 standard deviations to the right of that average. Now let's uh, contrast that to this one here. This second z-score of negative 0.6 tells me that my test score of 80 was 0.6 standard deviations to to, ha, to the left. Now what's important about that is that I could have put the negative here and then I would say instead of telling direction since the negative would tell me I was going to the left I would say negative 0.6 standard deviations away from the mean. But I wouldn't want to put negative 0.6 to the left because then I would be moving to the right. Double negative of the mean 86. So in this case my z-score was negative because my test score was below the average. Now for red emphasis here, a z-score is not a percentage. Okay, a z-score is not a percentage. I know you might see the 0.583 and think it's 58.3% and the z-score here is a negative 0.6 and think it's negative 60% but it's not a percentage. But we can use the z-score to find percentile and that's going to be the focus of the remainder of this entire section is to take that z-score and turn it into a percentile which will tell us the percentage under that given point. Now I've warned before you watched all these videos is that you print off or have in front of you a z-chart. Now I've provided a z-chart here. Uh, this is a zoomed in version of the one that I provided for you and I'm going to be teaching you how to read this chart um, throughout the next video series here. Uh, very importantly, this is, um, <laughs> this is a pretty big skill. I mean, you will be able to use some technology to help you, but what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at, let's say, a position um, on this chart. Let's just say we're going right to the center here with mu. Okay, that's mu. So this is a little preview of what we're going to do in the next video. Mu is the complete average and I told you what percentage mu is from the left or from the right and what percent of the population it is. So if you go back to the beginning of the video you can see that. But first of all, just, just think about this. How many standard deviations is mu away from itself? Mu is zero standard deviations away from the norm. So the mu z-score is zero. That means the z-score at zero is 50%, which is what I said at the beginning of the video. An average person has 50% of the data below them and 50% of the data above them. And we're really going to dive into this in the next three videos. So thank you for watching and keep up the great work.